so You're listening to a Mamma Mia podcast. Mamma Mia acknowledges the traditional owners of land and waters that this podcast is recorded on. If you're missing your weekly out loud routine over the break, we wanted to let you know that we are still dropping episodes for Mamma Mia subscribers. So you can get full access to Out Loud, including the back catalogue of over 150 subscriber only episodes. Subscribe to Mamma Mia via the link in the episode description. Mama Mia! And welcome to Mamma Mia Out Loud and welcome to a special summer episode. If you are missing us in your feed, we thought we'd drop in and give you a bit of inspiration about what you should be watching, listening to, reading over the summer if you've got a bit of time. I'm Holly Wainwright. I'm Mia Friedman. And I'm Jessie Stevens. We're starting with our TV shows of the year. Now, the filter for this, friends, is the TV shows where we've got to the end of the year, we really believe were the best things we watched and the things that if you've got a bit of time to go back and binge, give them a go. Out Louders, before we start, we're going to try to say where to watch all of these shows that we're about to talk about or movies, but we highly recommend you download the Just Watch app. It's free and you just type in the name of any movie or TV show and it'll tell you what streaming services they're on. These are our absolute top picks. My first one is Beef. I'm a dangerous guy. (laughs) So stop messing with me and leave me alone or else. I would love to let this go. But actions have consequences. I just can't understand what those people are so angry about. I loved Beef. It is on Netflix. It is Ali Wong and it is about rage. And I think I was feeling particularly (laughs) rageful when I watched it. I kept turning to people going, don't you find this rage relatable? And they were like, I don't think this is meant to be relatable. And I was like, that's (laughs) interesting. It's really dark and funny. It's dark and funny. It was Elfie who got me onto it as well. Oh, yeah. So it begins with a road rage incident between two strangers and basically it sparks this feud. But it's also about Asian rage and how there's almost like an expectation that it will be suppressed and that you'll be polite and that you'll be the nice person who's pleasing everyone else. But seeing on screen these characters completely unravel, especially the character of Ali Wong, who is the woman who's doing it all and she's like got the two kids and she's got all this money and it's the American dream and yet she actually wants to kill people. I just found it so fun. And she becomes so unhinged. I loved it because who knew she was an actor? She was a really, really good actor. really good, yeah. I loved it. And the other thing, look, this isn't new, but if you're on holidays and you're like, I want to watch a series where there are lots and lots of series. I want to get really into something, Mm. some premium television. I've got time on my hands. I've got time on my hands. Then do I have the show for you? Because I have spent the last maybe three months getting into Homeland. I missed something once before. I can't let that happen again. We're all fighting the same enemy here. I made a deal with the flight recorder for your asset in Moscow. I told you there is no such person. He doesn't exist. She. What? Only you can stop this now. Homeland is about, I don't know, 15 uh, years who's old? Who's in that? What was the gateway for you to suddenly go, now's I'm so the time glad you for asked. Homeland? Yeah. It all began with Flashman is in Trouble. Another recommendation from this year. Yeah, that was which great. Which is, I actually loved it. Now, that has my good friend Claire Danes in it. Claire Danes made my partner go, you know what's a great show, Homeland? And I said... I never watched Homeland. Had he already watched it? He had watched the whole it. Thing? No, he'd watched three seasons. Mm-hmm. Anyway, we started watching it and I went, oh, I don't know, CIA. Like, is it really? Oh, my God. It has really captured my attention. And it's particularly interesting because it is about sort of the Al-Qaeda, US, Middle East politics in the wake of September 11. It actually is really relevant for right now. Mm. And the way that you see what American television, how they cast Middle Eastern people and terrorism for a really long time. I just think it it informs our current moment. So it's about a guy who comes back who's a a released hostage, right? He's been held hostage and he's Damien Lewis who's that like dark redhead. I like that. I've got a soft spot for that look. Anyway, that's irrelevant. Mm -hmm. He was held hostage in Afghanistan. Yep. And then he comes home and he's treated like a hero but then the question marks start is, is he 
hero or is he an Was he turned? spy? Yes. It's really, really tense. The way that the CIA operatives manipulate things and then they- I'm going to say if you have anxiety because I tried to watch this it's, a few years ago, yeah, yeah. I couldn't. I found it was too- you've It's got quite violent. you anxiety. Yeah. But it was more I'm not good at thrillers because I find the- Tension of tension it. Tension yeah. of it too much. Yeah. I take it on and I don't. I don't like it. It's very pacey and I just feel like if you need something that's going to get you into it and you want something to watch with a partner that you both might enjoy, like Mm. I've just, we're up to season four and I'm just still very into it. Let me know when to stop because I think there's eight seasons and it definitely Mm. is meant to get bad at some point. Can someone let me know when to stop? I actually stopped after season two, I think, because I was very invested in that whole Claire Danes, Damien Lewis situation and that kind of goes away Mm. after a couple of seasons. But, yeah, great show. Watching that on Disney Plus, which I think might also be where I watch Flashman. So that got me into Disney Plus. Flashman is in trouble. So I've got a recommendation for those people who, like me, were the basic bitches who thought that succession was too highfalutin for them. (laughs) Because there was a period of time in 2023 when the only thing that the clever people wanted to talk about was Succession because it was the last ever season of this very prestige, much-loved show about a family who may or may not be the Murdochs, but they're the Roys in this instance and they own a big media company and they're all trying to white ant each other constantly to be the one who stands alone at the end, right? Gregory Hirsch, executive assistant to Tom Wamsgans, correct? Uh, If it is to be said... So it be, so it is. So I hear you've made an enormous faux pas and everyone's laughing up their sleeves about your date. What? Why? Why? Because she's brought a ludicrously capacious bag. I'm the youngest boy! Check it. Born on the north bank, king of the east side, 50 years strong, now he's rolling in a sick rod, handmade Now, obviously it's not new. I had dipped in and out of succession over the years and sometimes I just found it a bit like, oh, it's too businessy or it's too complex or I've lost track of who that person is or whatever. And then when you guys were so obsessed with this final season, I resisted, resisted, and then I just crumbled like a crumbly thing, (laughs) (laughs) like some Danish feta. I just crumbled. (laughs) You just poo-pooed it for so long. I'm so interested to know what turned you. We had to explain to Holly. I reckon it was the moment we said to Holly, don't worry, we don't really understand what they're saying either. Oh, right, yeah. And then Holly went, oh. oh yeah. okay. Well, you know what else is there was a bit of me that was being really petulant and I remember watching Insiders on the ABC once and there was a journo who was wearing like a Waystar Royco sweater and it was like oh, yeah. it was the show that all the like super clever smug people watch and sometimes when that happens I'm just like, I'm not going to. I'm not going to. You can't totally make me. Like, That's how I feel about Ted Lasso. Mm. Yes, exactly. I crumbled, I started watching and I went back to the beginning it's all on binge so the four seasons are all on binge I went back to the beginning and started watching it and wouldn't you know it everybody was right some of the best written most brilliantly performed excellent subtle funny Mm. tv ever made bloody loved it if you were not on the succession train get on it the other thing is and so completely different I think that everyone needs to watch Alone Australia if they didn't watch it this year because there's going to be a new season soon. Holly, I've gone to watch this. It's kind of like a reality thing, right? Like a documentary. But then I felt like I was so out of the loop that I I thought maybe it's not something you go back and watch. I think you can totally go back and watch it because you probably have to be living under a rock to not know who won this in the end. Because the premise for Alone, right, it's an international franchise. This is the first Australian one. SBS did it. It's their most highly rated show ever of all time. I'm scoping out where the best place for a shelter is going to be. My survival strategy was to just blast the shelter right away. That goes there. I want to have a home. I want to have somewhere that feels like it's mine. The premise is you get a load of people who are all have some experience in survival. They're outdoorsy people. They're like Brent, you know, except yeah. they're a bit more capable perhaps. But they've got their zippy off pants. They've got their <laughs> fishing rods. They know how to start a fire. And you throw them in a very alone, obviously, individually alone, in a very remote place, and then they have to film themselves 24-7. Mm. The last one standing wins. Mm. They win money. They have to catch their own food. They have to make their own everything. The reason this was such a particularly excellent season is because it was brilliantly cast. That's always the key, right, as am I into the people? And it ended up being a kind of face-off between 
alpha man who thinks he knows everything and sort of hippie woo-woo woman who does know everything, but she's going with the flow more. And it was like, who's going to win this battle? Even if you know who won, it's Mm. such good TV. It's so well made. And there's going to be a new season. This one was in Tasmania. I'm not sure where the next one is. I think it might be in New Zealand where they're allowed to kill a few more animals. But it was really great. And I reckon you could go back and watch it anytime. It was weirdly gripping. I watched it with my teenagers and we got into it. And I remember hearing someone, remember when people had to do lockdown quarantine and Mm. had to be in a hotel for two weeks. Someone was saying that they'd watched over that two weeks, like just a million seasons of Survivor because it made them feel better. About their circumstances. Less deprived. So what I loved about watching alone was that you get so invested about, oh, no, she nearly caught the eel but then yes. swam away and you're like, she hasn't eaten for three weeks. <laughs> and I'm and then so you excited order about the dinner. eel. And then you Uber Eats <laughs> arrives and you're like, nom, 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 nom. And I reckon that Gina Chick, who is the big celebrity who came out of it, is one of the most refreshing and interesting Unbelievable. people I've seen in public life in Australia for years. So big, big fan. Those are my two big tick shows. Before we tell you more, of our must-watch recos over the summer break, we need to let you know about something really exciting. We've known about it for months and months and we have been waiting to tell you about it because this is a passion project, I think, of both of us. And also we're in it. We've launched an exercise app. It's called Move by Mum Mia. It's brand new and it is for anybody, anywhere, no equipment, You can do cardio, Pilates, yoga, prenatal, postnatal. It is all there for you. It's designed for maybe you haven't done exercise in years. Mm. Maybe you do exercise all the time, but you want the freedom of doing it at home. And you can apply all different filters, like my favourite filter to apply and also Holly's is no jumping. Yeah. I only want to see workouts with no jumping. The reason that we made Move, we've been working on this for a couple of years, is because the fitness industry has just made women feel terrible about ourselves for a really long time. Not all aspects of the fitness industry, but you know that as a woman or a woman of a certain size or a certain age, it can be really intimidating to go onto fitness apps or Mm. to walk into a gym. And it can also just be really difficult to find the time, the mental load of joining a class and getting there when you need. Most of us don't want to run a marathon. No. We want to move our bodies and like integrate that into our everyday lives. And that's what this app is all about. Move was made to fit into your life and your schedule, to work with your budget and your fitness levels and to make you feel good. It is available right now. So if you want to give it a go, where should they go, Jessie? They should go to move.mamamia.com.au and you can start your free trial right now. Mamma Mia out loud! I have struggled with my concentration span this year And I've got so many shows I've started but haven't Mm. finished. And I don't know whether it's also because I've been so immersed in the making of Strife this year as an executive producer and Jessie, of course, as a producer and writer, that I've felt that fiction, because I've been immersed in that world, that I just haven't had the capacity to get involved in a show. Mm. And often, you know, you need to watch a couple of episodes to really commit And I just keep starting and not getting gripped by other things. So what I found I've really loved this year is documentaries because the other big problem is when you're trying to look for a show to watch with someone else, it's very hard to agree on a season because it feels like such a big commitment that you've both got to make. It's just a movie, essentially a documentary. Some of them have gone for various parts, but it's like a limited series, Mm. which I like the limited part. So I'm going to recommend a couple. Beckham, of course, on Netflix, which... The first time I watched it, I was like, why is there so much soccer in my Posh Spice movie? Tonight we bring you the story of how David Beckham became a global phenomenon. David Beckham, unstoppable. And I actually fast-forwarded through all the soccer bits. Didn't take me that long to watch it. The second time I watched all the soccer bits, it was a better documentary <laughs> when you watch the soccer, I'm which is so what it's about. soccer now. I just loved it. It's, of course, about David Beckham and his 24-year marriage to Victoria Beckham. I thought it was just fascinating. There was so much I'd forgotten and I loved, you pointed out, Jesse, that cancel culture predated the internet. Like if there was ever a person who got cancelled for something that certainly wasn't a crime. It's David Beckham for mm-hmm. getting sent off in some big World Cup match and meaning that his team had to play with 
less players and lost. We were drowned. But he just kept going. I don't give up easy. It's Beckham. He's done it now. And that hounded him. And it's unbelievable he didn't destroy him, but for years and years and years and watching that because now being cancelled is very much an online virtual experience. For him, it was so visceral, walking Mm. into stadiums. People are booing him, 80,000 people booing him and jeering at him. Like how you survive that is amazing. The psychology of that was fascinating to watch because it's very hard when you talk about a cancellation to depict it these days because it happens online. So I just thought it had a lot of currency. Of course, the supermodel documentary on on Apple. I should. I don't think you'd like it. Great. Okay. I don't think it's interesting to you. I'm going to give you a free pass Thank on you. that one. Thanks. Because Aww. it's going to be most interesting to Gen X women because these women we feel like we knew so much about but we very rarely heard them talk and we never heard their side of the story. And to peel that curtain back and look at women who are now in their 50s as we are I could have watched a hundred episodes of it. It's fairly sanitized, but they're vulnerable and you learn things. I was not seen as a person who had a voice in her own destiny. He said you should lose five pounds. I got scared I didn't belong. But Linda's a chameleon. She could really become whatever the photographer wanted her to become. Where do you watch it? You watch that on Apple TV. I think Naomi Campbell gets a bit of a free pass, but everybody else... Oh, it's so interesting. And also the way that the four women, Naomi Campbell, Cindy Crawford, Linda Evangelista and Christy Turlington, the different approaches they all have to ageing and their looks. Mm. Some of them look exactly the same, like Naomi. Others have had a lot of work, like Cindy. Linda's had work that's gone really badly. And Christy has no doubt had some work, but looks very much like an extraordinarily beautiful woman, but a woman her age. I just loved it. I thought it was just so good. I got to throw in on the documentaries for those other Gen Xers is the Wham documentary is also great that's on Netflix and it's about the 80s and George Michael and homophobia and all those things. Yeah, that was good too. And for the football thing, the Matildas doco that was on Disney. I hope Australia is a part of the change in women's football for good. As an athlete, you always have to be at your best because someone's coming up through the ranks to take your spot. I wanted to be a mum for so long. It's just taken my life to a whole new level. The main thing now is inspiring that next generation. Oh, I loved that. That was one of my favourite things this year. And you know what? I think that if you watched it before the World Cup when we didn't know who all the Matildas were, it gave you really good context. But watching it now, now that we know who they all are, it's like a real fly on the wall of all these big celebrities because now you know about Katrina Gorey and how she had her baby and you know how much Courtney Vime is trying to get into the team. And so it still really stands up as a watch and that's on Disney+. Plus. I agree. I watched that after the World Cup for that exact Uh. reason. I wasn't that interested in it before the World Cup but afterwards I'm like and I would also say the Wiggles documentary outstanding I think that's on Prime absolutely loved that and have a listen to my no filter with Anthony because he talks about some things that he didn't even talk about on that including his twisted testicle anyway moving on Movies. Love a good movie. First one is Air, which is on Prime Video. It's the one that was all about Michael Jordan. People don't know what the hell a Nike is. What's a Converse? NBA all-star shoe. There's nothing cool about Nike. You would have to have a pretty compelling pitch. This is where you come up with a brilliant idea that no one else can see. Let's hear it. We build a shoe line around just him. I need the greatest basketball shoe that's ever been made. Who's the player? Michael Jordan. I keep getting stuck every time I go to watch that. So Matt Damon, Ben Affleck. I mean, you really shouldn't need to know. No, you know what? You know what it is for you? What? Business. Like it's what's fascinating is like a product and branding and like decisions that were made. I remember when Holly told us about it, she's like, it's the underdog and they're Nike. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and the real hero is Michael Jordan's mum and how one decision, oh. the generational wealth they've created is just fascinating. And just changing the game entirely in terms yep. of like celebrity endorsement, like just wild. Mm. 
because I didn't realise that before that, celebrities would endorse things, but they kind of had no power. They didn't get a cut of what they sold. Mm. Like this just meant that as an athlete, your career wasn't as limited. It's not like Michael Jordan was only going to make money until the day he stopped playing basketball. This meant that there was longevity. The other one, this was, and I don't think I actually recommended this. I think I forgot because I went to the movies and saw this while I was off. Past Lives. What a good story this is. Childhood sweethearts who reconnect 20 years later and realize they were meant for each other. In the story, I would be the evil white American husband standing in the way of destiny. Shut up. He was just this kid in my head for such a long time. I think I just missed him. Did he miss you? It is a... Everyone said this is outstanding. It's like award-winning, but also I saw it with my brother and Claire's partner. A lot of people said this is the best movie they've ever seen, which is a pretty high bar, and different kinds of people said that to me. We were in the office and Lee Sales was here, and in the five-minute conversation we had, she sold this movie to me, all right? And so it's a 2023 romantic drama. It's written by Celine Song, who I believe is Korean. It is about two Koreans. One then goes off and lives in New York and the other one stays. It's about this concept of inyon is what it's called, and it's a Korean word. It's about past lives, that if two strangers walk past each other on the street and their clothes accidentally brush, it means that there must have been something between them in a past life. And if you get married, then they say it's because there's 8,000 layers of inyon over Mm. 8,000 lifetimes. The whole point of this is like, do I have room in this lifetime for this life to be lived or am I living this one? It's really kind of esoteric. You can watch that now on Apple TV. I was trying to think when we were talking about movies and deciding what to recommend, whether or not I'd actually been to the movies to see any movies this year. Because most movies I watch like with my kids That's on the couch at point. home. And then I was like, well, obviously Barbie. I'm just anywhere else I'd be yes. I think we all went to see Barbie in a theatre, which was quite the thing. I don't think I need to recommend Barbie because I think everybody has already done that. Two of the most memorable movies I saw this year were the ones that I recommended on the show and got absolutely hammered for, and I stand by them. (laughs) The Banshees of Inner Sheeran is on Disney+, Plus, right? I recommended that because it was Oscar winning. Like, it was a huge deal. It's got Colin Farrell in it. What's it about? Well, this is where I will immediately lose you, my friend. But what it's about is two men who are best friends who live on a tiny island in Ireland, and one day... One of the men just decides that he does not want to be friends with the other guy anymore. They meet at the pub every day. That's fun. 12 o'clock or whatever. And one day, one of the guys just says, you know what? I don't want to be friends with you anymore. I actually find you quite annoying and irritating. And the other man completely unravels. Now, if I've done something to you, just tell me what I've done to you. And if I've said something to you, maybe I said something when I was drunk and I've forgotten it, but I don't think I said something when I was drunk and I've forgotten it. But if I did, then tell me what it was. And I'll say sorry for that too, Colin. Uh, with all my heart, I'll say sorry. Just stop running away from me like some fool of a moody school child. But you didn't say anything to me. And you didn't do anything to me. Well, that's what I was thinking, like. I just don't like you no more. And it follows this story of male friendship, male emotional vulnerability, all that stuff, but with a really kind of surreal twist. It is so good. Are there ghosts? There are not ghosts, but there's a fair amount of weirdness in the whole scenario and of this sense of dread that's coming over you that something bad is going to happen. This sounds horrific. No, I think it sounds brilliant. It's very you. I'm sold. Basically about friendship, rejection and love. It's so great, but I know when I recommended it, quite a lot of Out Loud has said, well, that's two hours I'm never getting back. (laughs) I'm like, it's not for everyone. The way that I always think is like, am I recommending that? Am I still thinking about it? Does it come Mm. back to me? And 100% that movie does. Mm. I thought you liked Cocaine Bear. Oh, my God. That was the other really controversial recommendation. I stand by that too. Elizabeth Banks, what a brave movie to make. It's a schlock horror movie set in the 80s, great soundtrack. It is gory and silly, based on a true story of a bear who ate a lot of cocaine that fell out of a plane. That's a movie I go, I don't need to see that. I I don't need to see that either. I don't think I need to see that. I can imagine. As somebody who is interested in filmmaking, TV, Mm. it's actually really unusual, different, fresh (laughs) Elizabeth Banks. It's noise, different, unusual. Is it a real bear? 
Or a person yeah. in a bear suit. Okay. It's a real bear. No, of course, to make the movie, yeah. they didn't have a real bear which they gave cocaine to, I presume. Like, I don't it's think you're allowed bear? to do that. Is it a man it in a bear CGI suit? Bear. But as in the bear looks very real to me, Jesse. that's all I'm okay. saying. Okay, this is very interesting. It's kind of funny. Like, it's a throwback to those horror movies uh. of the 80s that were like, funny slash schlocky and it's just like sharknado yeah but smarter than that Mm. and i think elizabeth banks was really brave to make it and it was actually a massive hit so yeah you guys are all wrong maya what did you watch i'm gonna go cerebral because i rarely do well holly's a basic bitch with her cocaine bear i loved a movie called tar you want to dance the mask you must service the composer If you're here, then you already know who she is. Lydia Tarr is many things. As a conductor, Tarr began her career with the Cleveland Orchestra. How's the writing going? Not so well. I keep hearing something. Schopenhauer measured a man's intelligence against his sensitivity to noise. Do you ever find yourself overwhelmed by emotion. Yes. Yes, it does happen. It starred Kate Blanchett. It's on Apple. I watched it on a plane and I know that that is usually not an indication of whether something's good Mm. or not because your standards are lower. But I found that I landed before I could watch the whole thing and I went to the ends of the earth to find out how I could watch the rest of it while I was still on holiday because I was so gripped. So It's about a musician called Lydia Tarr, played by Kate Blanchett. She's days away from recording the symphony that will elevate her career. Okay, so far, I'm out. Classical music, symphony, don't care. But what's interesting is she gets embroiled in a cancellation. She's a lesbian conductor and she has been having inappropriate relationships (gasps) with young women. Oh, that's a surprise. In the orchestras that she's been conducting. I came in. It's really interesting because it's unexpected. I mean, I'd watch Kate Blanchett read the phone book. She's mm. gripping and she plays this particular role. Gay community love it when she plays a lesbian because she does it very, very well. <laughs> She's like a full lesbian icon and you'll be able to see why. It's phenomenal. It's set somewhere in Europe. I can't remember where, but it's just interesting and I loved it. For something very different, I watched a movie called Licorice Pizza on Stan and the Hyam sisters, who, this is slightly convoluted, but if you watched Bejeweled, Taylor Swift's video clip, and in the beginning, Laura Dern plays the wicked stepmother, the three sisters and Taylor's Cinderella. No. I'm just going to just ignore you both because okay. neither of you ha- share my pop cultural references. There's this amazing group of three sisters called the Hyam sisters. They're so brilliant. Anyway, there's this movie, it's not directed by... Sophia Coppola or Lena Dunham, but it's that genre. So it's a throwback to the 50s, this girl growing up in the suburbs in some American town, you know, one of those coming Mm. of age stories. It's on stand. It was nominated for lots of awards. It's like quite iconic and funny and just, you know, it's kind of like a puberty blues sort of thing. It's that kind of a vibe. Can I go off track and ask you, Mia, have you been to see the Taylor Swift concert film? Okay, so I made a deliberate decision to not go and see it because I've got tickets next year. I'm not going to watch it because I want to be surprised at the concert. But if you did not get tickets, highly recommend. Does your daughter feel the same way? Is she not watching it? Yeah, we've both decided. We actually had bought tickets to go on the weekend that it opened at the movies because that Mm. was the full experience. But then we had to give our tickets away. We couldn't go for some reason. We've since decided we want to be pleasantly surprised in February. Delayed gratification. Yeah. Thank you for listening to us try and sell you our very different tastes. <laughs> I think you, Jesse, would love the Banshee of Erisherin because it's it's really sad and you like sad things. I like sad and I like Ireland. What I would love is for the Outlouders to put in the group your favourite watches because we're just going to have time throughout the year. And you know you then sit down in front of Netflix and you're like, there was something that was big in February but I was busy that month. Mm. So tell us your best movies and television shows in the Mum Mare Out Louders Facebook group, please. And if you were driving or walking or didn't have a pen or who even uses pens, what even is one anymore, and you have wanting to keep track of all the things we just recommended. If you sign up for the Outlouders newsletter, you just get all our recommendations. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to look anywhere. 
they just come to your inbox. Put a link in the show notes. And if you want to listen to something else over this holiday period, we're releasing so much content for our subscribers. In fact, Holly sat down with Luca and I to ask us about becoming parents. There were things in that conversation I think we realised for the first time. It's about mental load. It's about the email that I sent Luca six weeks in. I'm desperate to hear about this because yeah. I've heard you refer to it, but I actually have never. Holly got me to get it up, and I found yep. the subject line, and I found that it was sent at like two a.m., oh, which gives you a sense oh, of, so juicy, yeah, of the email. I so, loved that conversation. I loved getting to sit down with both of you, and you. Oh, it's so. Great great listen to that the link is in the show notes thank you for listening to us we hope you're having a good summer this is australia's number one news and pop culture show mama mira out loud as you know and this episode was produced by the wonderful emmeline gazillas the assistant producer is tarly blackman and there's been audio production from leah porges thank you bye Bye. shout out to any mama mia subscribers listening if you love the show and want to support us as well. Subscribing to Mamma Mia is the very best way to do so. There is a link in the episode description.